Good morning, everybody. Our chapter today is Planes and Lines. This is chapter 4 in the GS textbook and chapter 20 in the LS textbook. In this chapter, we will see the Cartesian equation of a plane in space and the system of parametric equations of a line in space. Remark, in, in all what follows, the space is referred to a direct orthonormal system, OIJK. Let's begin with the first part of the chapter, which is equation of a plane determined by a point and a normal vector. Now, P is a plane that passes through point A and having N as a normal vector. Remember, a normal vector to a plane is a vector that is orthogonal to the plane. So this is a plane P, it passes through point A and it's orthogonal to N. Now, if we choose any point M in, on the plane, A, M, and N would be orthogonal. Consequently, their scalar product would be equal to zero. N dot A, M equal to zero is a vector equation of P. Now, let's see how do we find the equation of a plane analytically. We are still in the same case. If we find the components of vector A, M, then the scalar product is zero, so x x prime plus y y prime plus z z prime is zero, and if we expand these details, we get u x plus v y plus w z plus this quantity is equal to zero. But uh, don't forget that this quantity is nothing but a constant, and if we replace this constant by small r, we get u x plus v y plus w z plus r is a zero where u, v, and w are the components of the normal vector. Now, this equation, which is ux plus vy plus wz plus r equals 0, is called a Cartesian equation of p. Let's take some examples. Let's begin with the first one. We need to write a Cartesian equation of the plane p that passes through point a and has n as a normal vector. We choose a variable point on P, which is M. We write the vector equation N dot A M is zero. We do some calculations using scalar product. We get an equation of the plane, which is 3x plus 2y minus 5z minus 4 is zero. Remember again and again that 3, 2, negative 5 are the components of the normal vector. Now we are still in the same example but we're going to see another method. We write the general form of the Cartesian equation, which is ux plus vy plus wz plus r is zero. We replace the components of the normal vector. We replace u by three, v by plus two, and w by negative five. Now to calculate r, we use belonging because a belongs to p. We substitute the coordinates of point a in the equation then we get r is negative 4, and an equation of p would be 3x plus 2y minus 5z minus 4 is 0. Let's take another example. We have a plane q with this equation. We need to find two normal vectors to q and the three points on q. Now, the first normal vector is very easy. It's 1, negative 2, 1, and it's taken from the general equation of the plane. So it's 1, negative 2, 1. Now, another normal vector would be any vector which is collinear to n1. And to get a collinear vector to n1, we multiply by any non-zero real number. What I did here is I chose n2, which is double n1. So the components would be 2, negative 4, 2. To find points on, on a plane, we take values uh, for any two out of these three variables, and then we look for the third one. I mean, if x, for example, is 0 and z is 0, y in this case would be negative 1.5, and b, the point b, would be 0, negative 1.5, 0. If we take, uh, let's say, values for x and y, and the easiest are when they are 0, if x is 0 and y is 0, z would be 3, and the point would be 0, 0, 3. 
Now, it's not necessary to, to take zeros only. We can take, for example, when y is 1 and z is 2. If we replace y by 1 and z by 2 and look for x, we get 3, 1, 2. So, to find normal vectors, first we use the Cartesian equation of the plane, then we multiply by any non-zero real number. And to find points on a plane, we just take any values for any two variables and we search for the value of the third one. Now, equation of a plane determined by a point and two non-collinear direction vectors. P is a plane that passes through point A and having two non-collinear direction vectors U and V. So this is the case. You see this is a plane P passes through point A and it has two non-collinear direction vectors U and V. Remember that a direction vector to a plane is a vector which is either parallel to the plane or contained in it. Let M be a variable point on the plane. This is M. We can see now that the three vectors U, V, and A, M are coplanar. Now, because they are coplanar, we can say that the determinant A, M, U, V is zero, or A, M dot U cross V is zero. Remember, in this specific case, because U and V are two non-collinear direction vectors, their cross would be a third vector which is orthogonal to both of them. It will be orthogonal to U and V at the same time, and in this case, it will be nothing but a normal vector to the plane. Now, let's take one example. We need to write a Cartesian equation of the plane that passes through point A and having U and V as direction vectors. We choose a variable point on P, which is M. We find the components of vector A, M, and we do have the components of the two vectors U and V. We write the equation, which is A, M dot U cross V is zero. We write the determinant of order three, which is equal to zero. Then we calculate to get 3x minus y plus 2z minus 3 is 0. Now let's talk about the third case, which is the equation of a plane determined by three non-collinear points. We have P is a plane that passes through three non-collinear points, A, B, and C. This is the case. Remember, three distinct non-collinear points determine a unique plane. So in this case, the plane passes through the three points A, B, and C, or the three points A, B, and C are located inside the plane. If we choose a variable point M on P, we can see that the three vectors A, B, A, M, and A, C are coplanar. Consequently, the determinant is equal to zero, or A, M dot A, B cross A, C is zero. Remember also that AB cross AC is a vector which is normal to plane P. Let's take one example. We need to write a Cartesian equation of the plane ABC. In other words, we need to write a Cartesian equation of the plane that passes through the three points AB and C. So, we also choose a variable point on P. We find the components of vector AM, the components of vector AB, AC. We write a m dot a b cross a c is zero. We write the determinant of order three, which is also equal to zero. We calculate to get seven x plus three y minus eight z minus five is zero. Now, Cartesian equations of coordinate planes. Coordinate planes in this case are x o y, the plane x o y, the plane x o z and the plane y, o, z. Now remember that the general Cartesian equation of a plane is ux plus by plus wz plus r is zero. And in this case, we need to look for u, v, w, and r. In the first case, the case of plane x, o, y, as you see here, it's a plane that passes through point o and has k as a normal vector, and k is 0, 0, 1. So this is k, which is a normal vector, and O is a point on the plane. We just apply what we did before. We put the components of vector k here in the equation. We get 0x plus 0y 
plus 1z plus r is 0 and to calculate r we use belonging finally we get the equation z equals 0 now similarly for the plane x o z the equation would be y equals 0 and for the plane y o z the equation would be x equals 0 you see for plane y o z it passes through point o and it has i as a normal vector now let's see the second part of that chapter that talks about the parametric equations of a line in space and in, the, in this case we're going to see how do we find the parametric equations of a line determined by a point and a direction vector so d is a line that passes through point a and having u as a direction vector this is d it passes through point a and it has u as a direction vector as we did before a direction vector to a line is a vector which is either parallel to the line or contained in the line if we choose a variable point on d we can see from this figure that the two vectors a m and u are collinear and if they are collinear we can say that a m vector equals t times u vector where t is any real number now a m equals t u is called a vector equation of line d Let's see it analytically. If we find the components of vector a m, and if we write the vector equation a m equals t u, and we do some calculations, x m minus x a equals t into x u, and so on, we can see that x minus x a is a t, y minus y a is b t, and z minus z a is c t. Now here. If we isolate x, y, and z, we get x equals a t plus x a, and then y is b t plus y a, and z is c t plus z a. Now, this would be the system of parametric equations of line d. Now, in this case, if we isolate t, we can see that t in the first case is x minus x a divided by a, and in this case, t is y minus y a divided by b. And here, t is z minus z a divided by c. And we can also see that all of these equations are equal to t. Now, this form is called the canonical form of line d. Now, one might ask, what happens if we are not given a point and a direction vector but we are given two points now in this case if we want to find a system of parametric equations of the line uh, that passes through the two points e and f we do perform a direction vector which is ef and we choose either one of these two points e or f now let's take some examples let's begin with example one we need to write a system of parametric equations of the line l that passes through point a and having u as a direction vector now we simply write the general form we replace the components of vector u which are 2 negative 3 4 and then the coordinates of point a which are 0 1 negative 1 let's see another example we have this line we are asked to find two direction vectors to d and two points on d we are also asked to check whether point e belongs to d or not Let's see, the first direction vector is 2, negative 1, 1, and uh, another direction vector would be, let's say, double u1, which is 4, negative 2, 2. We can also choose, uh, let's say, the opposite of u1, which is negative 2, 1, negative 1. Now, here, uh, to find points on a line, we just take values for the parameter m. And the easiest is when m is 0. So if m is 0 here, we get x equals negative 1, y is 0, and z is 2. Uh, if m, let's say, is 1, x would be 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then y is negative 1, and z is 3. Now, the second part of the question asks whether point E belongs to D or not. To see, we substitute the coordinates of point E here instead of x y and z 
in the first case we get m is a 3 in the second case we get m is also 3 and in the third case we get m is 1 now because m doesn't have a unique value m is a 3 and m here is 1 we can say that e is not a point on d now let's take some special cases we need the equations of the coordinate axes remember the coordinate axes are the x-axis the y-axis and the z-axis remember also the general system of parametric equations and in this case we need to find a b and c and x0 y0 z0 now let's see the first case the case of the x-axis as you see here the x-axis passes through point o so o is a point on the x-axis and it has i as a direction vector and i is 1 0 0 so if we just replace the components of i and the coordinates of o, we get x is t, y is 0, z is 0. Similarly for the y-axis and the z-axis. Now this is a summary of chapter 2. Now we saw in the chapter planes and lines, in the first case of plane, if we are given a point and a normal vector, the Cartesian equation would be ux plus by plus wz plus r is 0, uv and w are the components of the normal vector, and r is calculated by belonging. Now, if we are given a point and two non collinear direction vectors, we simply write am dot u plus v is 0, and if we are given three non collinear points, we write am dot ab plus ac is 0. And in all of these cases, m would be a variable point on the plane. The second part was talking about system of parametric equations of a line. If we are given a point and a direction vector, we just put the components of the direction vector before the parameter, and we put here the coordinates of the given point. And if we are given two distinct points or the line passes through two distinct points we do perform the components of the vector a b in this case and we choose uh, either one of the two points a or b to apply more or to practice more you may solve all the exercises and problems on pages 46 47 in the gs textbook thank you